step-by-step -step instructions on how to install and configure a Google Kubernetes engine, that's GKE, using a graphical user interface on the Google console. And when you're creating these consoles, you have an option to create either a standard type of cluster or an autopilot. With that, the deployment of Kubernetes engine could be a zonal or a regional cluster. What is zonal and regional cluster means? Including when you're defining a cluster, you will be selecting a node pool. So what does that node pool means? Plus what is public versus private Kubernetes engine? We're going to cover all this in this video. Hi, this is Atul from team K29 Academy, where we help you in your journey to learn cloud and Kubernetes including DevOps, to go from a complete beginner to an expert in these topics. So now, before we tell you or give you step-by-step -step instructions to create a Google Kubernetes engine, let me first tell you some of the basics that will help you to understand this whole setup. And if you already are familiar with that and you want to jump on to directly to the installation, you can just fast forward this particular video and go straight to that particular topic. So first is, there are two types of Kubernetes options you can do. One is DIY Kubernetes, which basically you install all the, all the components, master node, worker node, everything from scratch. And second is managed Kubernetes, like you have Google Kubernetes engine on Google, or Elastic Kubernetes service on AWS, or Azure Kubernetes service on Azure Cloud, or Oracle Kubernetes engine on Oracle Cloud. The difference between DIY Kubernetes and managed Kubernetes is that DIY, you are going to manage both master node and worker node, also known as the control plane and data plane respectively. Whereas in managed Kubernetes, the master node is always managed by your cloud provider, like Google in this case, whereas worker node are also called as data plane where your applications run, you have an option to either delegate it to the cloud provider or you have an option to manage that as well. So in this video, we are going to configure managed Kubernetes, which is Google Kubernetes engine. So when you're deploying the Google Kubernetes engine, you have two options of deployment. You can either deploy a standard type cluster or you can do autopilot. So what's the difference between standard and autopilot? In standard, the master node, also called as control plane, is managed by Google. Whereas your worker node is all managed by you. So you have full control, what kind of operating system you're selecting, what kind of a configurations you'll be having on those worker nodes, and you will be managing underlying the security of those worker nodes. So in autopilot, when you're deploying the application, that time the pods which runs your application will automatically spin off and Google will take care of running underlying infrastructure on which your pod runs. You don't need to worry about them. That's the beauty of autopilot cluster. So in this diagram, this in autopilot, both control plane as well as these worker nodes are all managed by the Google Kubernetes. Whereas in the standard one, you have to manage these nodes in standard mode. Now, next thing is that when you're deploying the standard GKE, that deployment can be regional, which means it can span across multiple zones, or it could be zonal, which means all the both master node and worker node are restricted to a particular zone. Whereas my autopilot will always be regional. So as explained in this diagram here, if you see my worker nodes are across multiple different zones in a regional one, and they're scattered across different zones within a region. Now, the fourth thing you will need to know is that when you create in the cluster, you'll be selecting a node pool and node pool is nothing but collection of the similar type of nodes on which your application will run. So let's suppose you have two different type of uh, workload. You have a very heavy database related workloads and you have a lightweight type of workload where you need a different type of uh, underlying operating system configuration or maybe a uh, less memory uh, kind of a virtual machines or maybe another workload you have a heavy disk IOs kind of application. In that case, you will have a node pool. For example, in this case, I have here analytics pool and that analytics pool any application that needs analytical analytics kind of uh, applications will go all my pods will run on this particular analytics pool whereas my different type of application will run in different uh, node pool so you'll be selecting the node pool and there's a default node pool and you can add and modify and delete these node pools as you build your or manage your kubernetes cluster and the final fifth bit you need to know is about networking so the Kubernetes cluster that you're creating, GKE cluster, that can be public or private. If it's public, 
that means you can connect to this master node from a, over the internet whereas in actual production environments typically you keep them as a private gke cluster now just to show you here demo so that you can later we can connect to these in a test environment we are doing it as a public gke cluster so that i can connect from my uh, remote machines now in order to create this cluster you will need a few things and if you don't have already we'll leave a link on how you can get hold of that so first thing is you will need a google cloud account and you can create a free account and if you don't have one there'll be a video which i've done in past which probably might be will be sharing the link it will be in the description link or link where you're watching this video now another thing you need is a project so you should already have a project and if you're familiar with google cloud you should already have a project when you create an account after that the first thing you do is you create a project so the project is nothing but it organizes all your resources in google cloud so anything that you create for example networking storage databases applications that all reside within a project so here if you see the structure i have an organization which is nothing but company through which my i'm using my google cloud in that i have some folders depending on the department or teams and that folders will have actually the projects and project is where i can have a for example test and test uh, prod dev or different way of structuring my project and within those project my resources will be deployed so i'm going to create a project now if you're not familiar with how to create a project it's very simple and straightforward we're assuming you already have that but we'll put again links of all how to create this project will be given on the blog which i'll refer in the description section here so now with that, let's look at how to create a standard, both standard and autopilot cluster. Now I've taken a video from a one, one of our training programs. So you might hear some references about the training. So ignore that completely. So first we are going to create a standard cluster. Once that's done, then we'll show you how to create an autopilot cluster. And then we will view and modify this standard cluster, including playing with the node pool. And finally we'll delete this cluster. So with that, let's listen about how to create this cluster. Now, once we're in the console dashboard, we'll go ahead and confirm our project from this drop down menu. And we can select whichever project we want to work in. Now we can start by creating a standard cluster. For that, we'll be going into the navigation menu and then to Kubernetes engine. You can directly select clusters from there or go over here. This is the landing page. And if the Kubernetes engine API is not enabled, you'll get a screen like this, which will ask you to enable the API. And we need to do that. Once the Kubernetes API is enabled, we'll be redirected to the page like this. Now this will list out all the clusters by default. But since we do not have any clusters, we can go ahead and create one by clicking on the create button over here. Now, this is where we get our two options. Do we want GK standard or GK autopilot? As we discussed the differences in standard, we'll be providing all the configurations and the management will be done from our side. And in autopilot, almost all the work will be done from Google's end. So minimal configuration will be required. So we'll be doing both. Let's start with GK standard cluster. So let's configure that. Now we need to provide a few details. First up, as always, is the name. So just to differentiate, we'll call it standard cluster. And as we discussed in standard, we have two options. We can make it either zonal or regional. So we'll let it be zonal as we have that option. And by default, we get US Central 1C as a zone. You can choose a zone that is nearer to you if you want or just let it be so these guides are there all right okay so we don't need to do anything else over here the next step would for us would be the node pools you can check the default pool over here and we don't have a pool so we'll go ahead and create one so this is just clicking on the default pool in the left pane and we we'll create a node pool. First step would be to name it. Let's call it Q21 demo pool. And this is the number of nodes that this 
configuration will have it's set at three we can increase or decrease it as per our requirement and for now this is okay you can go ahead and check the nodes data as well the details image type we have container optimized os that's right and we have an e2 medium 4 gb ram 2 virtual cpu 100 gb board disk all of these we can change over here right now and once we've confirmed all this configuration and set it as per our needs then we can go ahead and click on the create button at the bottom to create the standard cluster now this would take a little time but as we can see now the cluster has been created we have a standard cluster called k21 standard cluster which is located in a single zone which is us central 1c we could have config configured it as a regional cluster then it would have spanned across the whole of us central one and it has three nodes and total of six vcpus we set the configuration to be an e2 medium machine so it has two cpus per node and also 4 gb memory per node and three of those nodes means we have a total of six virtual cpus and 12 gb of ram so this is our standard cluster that we just created now next we'll be creating an autopilot cluster and see what the differences between the two are now we're already in the kubernetes clusters page in case you aren't you'll go to the navigation menu kubernetes engine and then select clusters from there this will lead you to this page and we can go ahead and create a new cluster by clicking on the plus button up at the top now we have the two options whether we want gk standard or gk autopilot we already made a standard cluster so this time we'll see autopilot and see the differences so configure a gk autopilot cluster now right off the bat we can see the differences there's no left side pane over here so uh, we don't have to configure the node pools or nodes or anything like that all you need to do is just provide a nice name the previous one was k21 standard cluster we'll call this k21 auto cluster then region set to us central one we can change it to whatever let's say us east one and in over here we do not have the option of going for a single zone the cluster will be created in regional mode only now the only thing left for us is to decide the networking whether we want this to be a public cluster or private cluster having it as a public cluster means that we are allowing for communication from public networks as well which we want so we'll leave it as a so we'll leave it as a public cluster and go ahead and click on create now you can see the cluster is being created now we can see that the autopilot cluster has also been created in the set location and the difference the mode autopilot over here and standard over here and since we did not configure the number of nodes or anything that's not displayed that will be done as per the requirement as is needed now next we can go ahead and see the details of the cluster that we created we'll check the standard cluster and we have the option to change the number of nodes we can see over here total size currently is three and we can change the cluster size we can add a node pool by clicking on the plus over here and the other things like the name location type where it's located all these things these cannot be changed apart from that the automation and all we we can be editing all this so for now we'll go ahead and try to upgrade the number of nodes that we have increase the size of this cluster just click on the plus add node pool and we have the name number of nodes all of this let's call this k21 pool 2 and let's say we add just one extra node and leave the rest as is and we'll go ahead and create So we get the message that the node pool is being created and these values will be updated once the operation finishes. So right now we have the total size of three should be changing once the new node pool is up and running. 
Now we get the message that the node pool is created successfully and we can see that the total size has increased from 3 to 4. We have two node pools, one with three nodes, one with one. We have a total of four over here. You can go back to the clusters and check the details over there as well. Just go to clusters from here. And we can see that in K2 on standard cluster, the number of nodes has been increased to four. Finally, we'll be deleting the clusters that we created because these have virtual machine nodes inside of them, which will cost you if you keep them running like that. So for that, it's very simple. Just select the cluster that you want to delete and then go ahead and click on the delete button. So it tells us that everything inside of this containers, nodes, everything will be deleted. We're fine with that. We'll confirm the deletion by clicking on the delete button. And the status over here shows that the cluster is being deleted. Once this one is done, we'll be doing the same for the K21 auto cluster as well. The autopilot cluster, we'll also be deleting that. Well, that's a step-by-step -step instructions on how to create a Google Kubernetes engine. Two type of GKE clusters, one is standard and autopilot. Now in future videos, we're going to talk going deeper into these concepts. So we'll be looking at things like how do you deploy applications? And then how do you scale these clusters like horizontal pod auto scaling or adding more nodes to the cluster. We'll also look at vertical pod auto scaling as well. Now, all these things, including this particular video has been taken from our Kubernetes training program. And that's a step-by-step -step comprehensive eight week training program where we go from a complete beginner in Docker and Kubernetes to go much more advanced things including getting a Kubernetes certified administrator or developer or an architect. So if you want to know more, I would like to invite you for approximately two hours free class where we will take you from a complete beginner and tell you and give you this complete 21 week roadmap on how to become a certified Kubernetes administrator. So go to this URL k2academy.com forward slash k8s02 enter your name, email address and optionally a phone number select the time convenient to you and click on save my seat and you'll be getting an invitation for a complete free class. However, if you want to go towards Google Cloud certification, so leave a comment so we can tell you about that free class on how to become a Google certified professional. With that, this is Atul from Team Kiran Academy and I'll see you next week with another episode. If you want me to cover any specific topic, leave them on the comments so I can add in my list to create videos for you. And I'll see you next week.